Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, this lecture is the last one um, in the series of different combinatorial problems. Uh, the series is 2.8 in this particular case. So um, I have eight uh, in the first part and eight in the second part. And uh, every series contains like four, five, six different problems. All right. So this is the last one on combinatorics. And it's basically a preparation for the next chapter of this course, which is the probabilities. And that's where the combinatorics really play a very, very important role. All right. So anyway, let's just uh, solve these problems. They are all presented on unizor.com website. And that's where I suggest you to go if you didn't do it yet and try to solve these problems yourself. Because that's actually the whole purpose of entire course, to teach you to solve problems. So to learn how to solve problems, you have to solve problems. All right, so let's go. Um, so we have four problems for today. Problem number one, uh, it's basically uh, solving equations. And you have a proportion to solve. Okay. So this is number of combinations from y to x and this is y factorial divided by x factorial and y minus x factorial. And let me take the proportion of the first to the last one uh, because it seems to be easier. You have x, y here and x, y here. So this as relates to this one and this is y factorial divided by y minus x factorial equals to 1 to 24, right? Okay, so that's the proportion. All right, so how can we solve it? It's actually very easy. Why? Because first of all, we know that y and x are natural numbers. And uh, 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 in this particular case, um, we can safely assume that uh, y factorial is not equal to 0 and y minus x factorial is not equal to 0 because y is always greater or equal to x so y minus x is greater or equal to 0 and 0 factorial is 1 so nothing is 0 so we can safely cancel this out cancel this out and what do I have? I have 1 over x factorial equals to 1 24th or x factorial is equal to 24, or x is equal to 4. 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 equals to 24, right? So that's very easy, and we have already solved for x. Now, knowing x, we can now take any other proportion and use it. Well, let's say uh, this one to this one. So y factorial divided by instead of x factorial I would put the 4 factorial which is 24 times y minus x which is 4 right factorial now proportion to this one which is uh, y plus 2 factorial over x factorial which is 4 factorial which is 24 times y plus 2 minus 4 factorial equals to 1 third, right? 1 to 3. This goes to this. All right. So, well, this is obvious, right? Now, let's talk about these guys. Let's convert them into a regular fraction. So, on the top I have y factorial on the bottom I have y minus 4 factorial also on the bottom I have y plus 2 factorial and on the top I have y minus 2 factorial and that's one third right okay now let's think about it what is y factorial is 
uh, the product of all numbers from 1 to y. And this is product of all the numbers from 1 to y plus 2. So we have two extra uh, multipliers here over this one. We have y plus 1 and y plus 2. Everything before y plus 1 is actually y factorial, right? So I can write this as y plus 2 times y plus 1 times y factorial and cancel the y factorial. Now, this guy relative to this guy. Again, this is 2 greater than this. It has y minus uh, 3 and y minus 2. So, what I will do is uh, I will replace this I can wipe out this and I can wipe out this. So y minus 2 factorial I will replace as y minus 3 and y minus 4 factorial, right? These are three consecutive things. And that gives me canceling of these two guys. All right, now obviously I can multiply it here, so I will have 3 uh, times uh, y uh, square minus, uh, minus 3y and 2y minus 5y plus 6 equals y square plus 3y plus 2, if I'm not mistaken, right? y square 2y and 1y, it's 3y's and 2. And here I have, yeah, looks like it. If I didn't make any arithmetic mistakes, I have a quadratic equation here. Unless I did arithmetic mistake, right? Uh, let me just think about it. So what do I have? I have 2y square um, minus 15 and minus 3, it's minus 18y plus 18 minus 2 plus 16 is equal to 0 or y square minus 9y plus 8 equals to 0, right? Yes, I reduce by 2. So that's what I have. And solutions are obviously one and eight of this quadratic equation and um, one is actually um, not good because x is equal to four right so y cannot be less than four so this is not a solution now this seems to be the only solution and if you will check it and i did by the way i substituted x and y four and eight and i've got the correct result. So that's the solution. It's actually easy, as you see, just convert it into a quadratic equation, no big deal. Next problem. Okay, the game of bridge. Uh, you have 52 cards back, you have four players, and you just deal 13 cards each. Now, question is, how many different um, distributions of 50, 52 cards among four players exist. Okay. Um, I have two different solutions which basically come to the same result and here is one of them. How can we deal 52 cards among four players? Well, here is what I suggest. Let's just order all 52 cards in one row. How many permutations are possible? 52 factorial, right? All the different orders. 
Now I will divide it in four pieces from the first to 13 to the first one, from 14 to 26 to the second one, 27 to whatever, 38 to the third one, and from 39 to 52 to the fourth one. Now, what's wrong with this? It's not 52 factorial distributions of the cards, because I can uh, change the order of these cards just by themselves, and I can change the order of these cards by themselves, and these, and these, and it will, it, it will still be exactly the same distribution of cards, right? Because it doesn't matter what is the order of cards for one particular player. The, uh, what, what, what the matter is, what's the set of cards the, uh, the guy got, right? So, basically, all these 13 factorial permutations of each cards within one particular player actually produce exactly the same um, distribution of cards. And obviously I have to multiply because with each of these permutations I can use each of these and I can use each of these and each of these and it will still be exactly the same uh, distribution of cards. So I have to divide 52 factorial by 13 factorial to the power of 4. That's my answer. Another approach to the same problem is, okay, let's first choose 13 cards for the first guy. In any sequence, doesn't really matter. What matters is the combination of 13 cards out of 52, and that's possible to do in this number of different ways, right? Number of combinations from 52 by, by, by 13. Now we have 39 cards left. Out of these 39 cards, I can pick any 13 and give to the second one. So, I have to multiply it by number of combinations of 13 cards out of 39 remaining. Now I have 26 cards remaining. And out of these, I can choose any 13 numbers, and that will be my third player's hand. And whatever is left, I don't really have any other choices, is the fourth guy. So that's a different answer than this one, right? Well, let's just think. Is it really different? This is 52 factorial divided by 13 factorial and 52 minus 13, which is 39 factorial. Right? I don't need these parentheses. Now, this guy is 39 factorial by 13 factorial and 39 minus 13, which is 26 factorial. Finally, this guy is 26 factorial divided by 13 factorial and 26 minus 13, which is also 13 factorial. And as you see, we have this. And what's remaining? 52 factorial and 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 times 13 factorial, so it's 13 factorial to the power of 4. We have exactly the same result, approached differently, and that's, as I was saying many times, is a very, very good thing uh, about the solution of your uh, combinatorics problem. If you can approach it from two different um, directions and get the same result, that's a good sign of the correctness, because it's very difficult to check the correctness of your numbers in, in combinatorics. All right, problem number three. Okay, you have a coordinate plane. And you are at point zero, zero. Now, let's assume you have only integer lattice here. So, this is your main x, y. Alright? And you are, on every step, can move either up or down or left or right by one unit. So, from point zero zero you can get either to point one zero or zero one or minus one zero or minus one minus one in one step. Then the next step, then the next step, etc. Your task is 
to come from 0, 0 to this point, which let's call it x, y, integer coordinates. And let's assume for simplicity that this is all positive, so everything in the first quadrant. Okay. Um, so your, your task is to get from this to this uh, in the shortest number of ways. Now, what are the shortest ways? Well, obviously, in this particular case, x and y are both positive, so you're moving to the positive direction vertically and positive direction horizontally. It doesn't make any sense to make any step to a negative direction, either horizontally or vertically. So what does make sense is to go something like this, 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 and this, or this, this, and this, or this, and this. All of them have actually the same uh, lengths, the same number of steps. Now, question is, if we are talking about only these ways, the shortest ways, from 0, 0 to x, y, how many of them do exist? Well, in this particular case, you see, uh, this is one way, this is another way, this is another way, four, five, I mean, it's, it's not easy to calculate how many different shortest ways exist in, in this particular case. So, question is how? Here is what I suggest as a, as a model, if you want. Every path which I am choosing contains certain number of vertical steps and certain number of horizontal steps. So I actually have to move in this particular case like 1, 2 vertically and 1, 2, 3 horizontally. Well, in a general case I have to move x steps horizontally and y steps vertically in basically any order. It doesn't matter as long as I don't do anything else but these steps I will be on the shortest path and that's what's very important all right so how can I in this case calculate how many different passes exist well here is my suggestion as, as a model let's mark each horizontal step with a letter X uh, a little letter H and vertical uh, step uh, with a letter V now we are talking about a string of H's and V's in some order which contain exactly X of H's and Y of V's, right? So the total length is X plus Y letters and the letter can be either H or V and we have exactly X H's and uh, Y letters V. So, how many different strings, basically, exist of the lengths x plus y, where there are certain x, particular, in particular, x number of uh, uh, le letters h. I don't really have to count v, because v will be whatever is left. After I choose x positions where my letter h is located, that's enough to basically determine the path. So, the number of paths is the number of different combinations of uh, x positions where I can put letter H out of x plus y positions where everything else is. So it's C of x uh, uh, number of combinations of x letters out of x plus y uh, letters. So if I you know have this number which is which happens to be x factorial divided by sorry, x plus y factorial divided by x factorial and x plus y minus x which is y factorial. As you see it's symmetrical because it doesn't really matter wh whether I choose uh, x positions where I put h or y positions where I put v. doesn't really matter because the result is symmetrical as you see relative to x and y. So that's the solution. Next. Okay. The next is... Okay, let's go back to the game of contract bridge. Okay, 
the contract bridge um, doesn't really matter whether you know how to play it or not here is basically an explanation um, it, it's about to, 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 to take tricks <coughs> and the stronger your deck your, 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 your hand uh, is the the more chances you have to basically capture more tricks right so that's kind of obvious so you have to somehow evaluate uh, the strengths of your hand and the suggestion is um, to disregard smaller um, cards and pay attention only to ace king queen and jack cards and assign them a numerical value like I just said and then you basically add all the um, numbers which you have like, let's say you have um, one ace and then one king and two queens let's say and one jack so you add up all these numbers you have a number which basically numerically uh, identifies the strengths of your hand in this particular way right now it's recommended again by people who know the game much better than I do that if you have um, uh, at least 12 points if you calculate the numerical equivalent of your hand then you can actually start um, bidding for, for, for the game bidding for the contract all right so you evaluate your strengths if it's 12 or greater you start saying something which basically is supposed to lead to some kind of a contract so let's just assume that you do have these 12 points which are represented as one ace one king that's seven two queens and one jack and um, so you have what you have 12 points so that's your combination one ace one king two queens and jack well that's the 12 points so you can actually start bidding for for the contract so now i can explain what the problem is about the problem is how many different um, combinations uh, of uh, different hands you can have if it has one ace, one king, two queens, and one jack. So that's basically my, 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 my question. How many different hands you can have with this particular uh, cards? I'm not talking about suits, I'm talking about any ace, any king, any two queens, and any one jack. That's what I'm talking about. So, number of hands when you have these uh, one, two, three, four, five cards, specific cards, specific by rank, not specific by suit. All right, so that's the problem. Um, now, instead of solving this particular problem, uh, I would rather um, expand it into something more general and I think that solution to a more general problem is kind of better understood and more obvious than the solution of this particular problem because you are completely uh, divorced from any kind of meaning card game aces etc I'm suggesting more mathematical approach and here is the approach let's say you have certain number of um, objects sorry, certain number of types of objects and types of objects now you have a set of these objects which includes K1 objects of uh, type 1 K2 objects of type 2 etc Kn objects of type n so that's what's given a pile of objects of n different types you have K1 of one type 
K2 of two, uh, the second type, etc., etc., and Kn of the nth type. Your task is to pick exactly J1 objects of this type, J2 of this type, etc., and Jn of the nth type. And the question is how many different ways to, to pick these number of objects out of these types um, do exist. And actually it's a very easy problem. And the solution to this problem is the following. How many different combinations of J1 objects of the type 1 out of K1 objects exist? Well, obviously it's number of combinations of J1 objects out of K1, right? Now, with each of these combinations, I can have certain number of combinations of the second type, which I can choose. I can choose J2 different objects of the type 2 from K2 available, and that's this number of combinations. Well, and obviously I have to continue it, and the last one is Kn and J n. So, the multiplication of these seems to be quite obvious in this particular problem. Now, how is it applicable to our uh, problem? Well, actually, it's quite easy. I have five different types of cards. I have aces, I have kings, I have queens, I have jacks, and I have all other cards which have zero, ra uh, zero points associated, like 9 or 10 or uh, 2 or whatever else. So all other cards are zero. So if I'm interested in this particular combination, one ace, one king, one, uh, two queens and, and one jack, and all other cards are of no value, which means the other cards belong to, to this category, I have to choose one card out of how many cards available of this type? Well, that's one out of four. We have four aces. Now, I have to choose one king, so I have to choose one out of four kings. Then I have to choose two out of four queens. I have to choose one out of four jacks. And the rest, now this is five, so out of 13 cards, uh, if you take five, you have eight left, right? So all other eight cards should be chosen out of all other... So it's 52 minus uh, 16, that's um, 36 other cards. So out of four aces and four kings <coughs> and four queens and four jacks and 36 other cards, I have to pick up correspondingly one, one, two, one, and eight. And the, the, the multiplication of these gives me the whole number of all the combinations. Well, that's it. That was the last problem. I would like to uh, really bring your attention to the fact that I have generalized the problem first, which seemed to be an easier um, just to understand how to solve it. Because all these particulars about the bridge and, and aces and, and, and queens, whatever, they are actually, they kind of shadow the real meaning of this problem. Real meaning is this. You have certain number of certain types of the objects and you have to pick certain number from each type. That's basically the mathematical sense of this particular problem. And that's how we should really approach it. All right, I should bring you again to unizor.com. I suggest you to go to this site and solve again all these problems just to inculcate in your mind basically the whole business of solving combinatorial problems. Um, also, uh, the uh, people who uh, sign in, and the signing in is basically a very simple procedure like your email address or something, um, you can actually um, be enrolled by a supervisor or your parent or yourself if you want to, ask as, uh, if you want to act as your own supervisor. You can enroll in different parts of the course or the entire course and it will enable to, uh, for you to, to basically take exams. And you can take any number of exams 
everything is free so basically the more the merrier um, so that's it and that was the last lecture I intended for uh, this uh, relatively simple combinatorial problems um, uh, that's again some kind of an introduction into the next chapter of this course which is about probabilities um, you really have to know the combinatorics to be able to calculate the probabilities of certain things so that was the purpose and um, that's the end of this uh, particular part thank you very much and good luck <laughs>